Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to the Yahweh and Yeshua Speak television show. We are broadcasting from Yahweh and Yeshua's temple in Evanston, Illinois. This is the Hebrew Husband and Wife Ministry. And we are going to start on a sermon today entitled, Run the Way of the Creator's Commandments. Let's start out in Psalms 119. Run the way of the Creator's commandments. Psalm 119. So there is um, in the world what people have uh, called retirement. But there is no concept of retirement given from the Creator in the scriptures. This is something that man made up. Psalm 119 and verse 32. Oh, yeah. Psalms chapter 119. Oh, yeah. It says, run the way of the Creator's commandments. Psalms 119 and verse 32. Read. Oh, yeah. Psalms 119 and verse 32. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. That's the mighty yeah. So it says, I will run the way of thy mitzvah yes. when thou shalt enlarge my lay, my ruach, my heart. So let's look at this, these, these three English words, I will run. So here's somebody talking about what the Creator says. Uh -huh. He's going to take and he's going to run with that. You get a whole bunch of people taking some stuff and running with it, but it's not from the Creator. Right, right. So, so what is this this person talking about when he says, "I'm gonna run the way of the Creator's commandments"? And let's see what these three English words "I will run" are in Hebrew. The three English words "I will run" are one primitive Hebrew word "roots." found at Strong's Exalted Concordance of the Old and New Testaments. Hebrews, uh, number 7323, Brown Driver Briggs Lexicon defines, I will run as to run with, run to meet, run as, a, as messenger, the runners properly out, runners as royal escort, of royal bodyguard, they run swiftly and dart like lightning of chariots. So this, I will run uh, the way of the Creator's commandments, says I'm going to be a royal bodyguard to the commandments. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to run swiftly, I'm going to dart like lightning, yeah, yeah. and I'm going to run as a messenger. Yes. Let's go to Genesis, the 18th Yes. Chapter. Yes. Hallelujah. That's our duty. Genesis chapter 18. Great. Magia. Hallelujah. And we're going to read verses 1 to 2. Hallelujah. Chapter 18. Praise God. And this is, is to illustrate this I will run. Is run to meet, run as a messenger. Yes. Talking about the Creator's commandments. Yes. The way that His commandments are structured or what His commandments says. Yes. Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 to 2 reads. Praise on. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 1. And Yahweh appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Verse 2. And he lifted he, and he lift up his eyes and looked and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. So this is one of the, the patriarchs that ran the way of yeah. the Creator's commandments. Yeah. It says, and Yahweh, <coughs> actually this is the son Yahshua, appeared unto him in the plains of memory to, to Abraham. He came to earth and he sat Abraham sat in the tent door in the heat of, of Hayam the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and the Ruach, Yahweh's spirit, quickened to him uh -huh. that these were angelic beings, that these were not just regular men that right, he saw right. coming. 
Yeah, I like he said, three Adam stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran. I know, right? He ran to meet them from the tent door, and he bowed himself to the ground. So he understood these were not just there right. were three men, right. but one of them was actually the master. Hallelujah. So look at, let's look at this, Psalms 119.30, 2 said, I'll run the way of thy commandments when you shall enlarge my heart. Yes. So let's look at these, the four English words, when thou shalt enlarge. So in other words, if man's heart is not enlarged, huh. he got that tiny heart. Yeah. So he will not be running the way of their creator's commandments. No, not like let's, sure. let's, let's see what... what Taking it out of the English, what does it say about these four English words, when thou shalt enlarge? Because it says, I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Okay. The Creator is not holding back that enlargement. No, it's not. But it is a, a prerequisite to run the way of the commandments. So let's, let's see what is this talking about when it says, when thou shalt enlarge the heart. The four English words, when thou shalt enlarge, are one primitive Hebrew word found as strong exalted concordance of the New Old and New Testament. Hebrews number 7337, Brown Driver, Briggs Lexicon defines them as to make large, make wide, enlarge, limit of territory, figurative of deliverance. Give firm footing and vigorous step and open mouth wide as a young bird to receive food. All right, so this, this having the heart being enlarged, it means to, to, to make enlarge the territory, the limit of territory, figurative of deliverance. Yeah, yeah. And to give a firm footing and vigorous step. Yeah. So then it said, when you have that firm, vigor and footing and vigorous step, then that is, getting you rooted and grounded in the commandments of the right, Creator's right, so words. And it's interesting that the Hebrew word run, I, I will run, is a Hebrew word roots. Hmm. R-U-W-T-S, pronounced roots. So once you get rooted in yep. the Creator, yep. then you get this enlargement, you get this deliverance, you get this firm footing and vigorous steps. Yes. Go to 2 Samuel, the 22nd yes. chapter, so we can look at this. Yes. This firm footing and this deliverance and, and your territory being enlarged. Yes. 2 Samuel, the 22nd chapter. Hallelujah. The love just grows and grows. Daddy Yahweh. 2 Samuel 22, we want to read verses 36 to 40. Hallelujah. 2 Samuel. Hallelujah. Chapter 22. And verses 36 to 40. Let's read, please. Okay. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 36. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, yes. and thy gentleness hath made me great. Yes. Verse 37, Thou hast enlarged my steps, Hallelujah. Me, so that my feet did not slip. Hallelujah. Bless Yahweh. So Hallelujah. here we see this, this enlarge his steps, yeah, yeah. as of deliverance, gave firm footing and a vigorous step. It says, Thou hast also given me the shield of thy Yeshua or salvation. So this is talking about running the way of the Creator's commandments yep, yep. because of an enlarged heart. Yep, yep. It says, you give me the shield of your salvation and your gentleness yes. that made me great. His gentleness. Thou hast enlarged my steps yes, under me yes, yes, you will. so that my feet did not slip. Right. So that, that word means gave firm footing and a vigorous step. Yeah, yeah. And when we're looking at this concept of, of of no retirement, which the Creator has no concept of retirement in the Scripture, we're going to find that when man invented this word retirement, I know, right? 
he's got all kinds of things in there about foot slipping and, and got this thing, I've fallen, I can't get up, mm. and all these, these other things that come under this door of the curse mm. that opened up under this word that he invented. Kind of like it is, bro. He said, like it thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so yep. that my feet did not slip. Right, right. So those of us that are running the way of his commandments, we have that enlarged heart. Yes, we do. And our feet do not slip. We do not. Verse 38. Verse 38. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them. Yes. And turned not again until I had consumed them. Verse 39. And I have consumed them and wounded them that they could not arise. Yea, they are falling under my feet. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Here's Yahweh Hallelujah. describing uh, the people that are running away of, of his commandments. Yes. I have pursued mine enemies yep. and destroyed them. Hallelujah. And turned not again until I had <laughs> consumed them. Yes. And I have consumed them and wounded them that, right? that they should not arise. I know, right? Yea, they have fallen under my feet. Hallelujah. All this comes from allowing the, the heart to be enlarged yes. and running away of the Creator's commandments. Yep, yep. Verse 40. Verse 40. For thou hast buried me with strength in yes. battle. Yes, yes. Them that rose up against me hast thou subdued unto yes. me. So here's the, in Second Samuel, uh, the man's letting you know who did this for him is the Creator. Is that right? Because he's in line running the way of the Creator's commandments. Yes. Thou hast girded me with coact to battle. Mm -hmm. Then the rose against me, thou hast subdued under yeah. me. That's right. Because he's running the, the way of the commandments. Yeah, yeah. So the Creator enlarges man's heart, which is his ability to comprehend that the Creator can tell him more accurately what's good for him. Yes. Because he alone had the wisdom to make man. I know, right? Go to Luke, the first chapter. So the Creator alone has the wisdom to I tell know, him right? what's good for man. But now you have to realize that doesn't stop man from trying to stand up and tell you what's good for man. I know, right? But he wants you to run the way of his commandments, yes. so then you'll you understand. Yes. Oh, okay, this is not the Creator. I know, right? So what um, this person may be telling me may or may not be good for me. Right. And if it disagrees with what the Creator said huh. in the Scriptures, then you know it's definitely not. <laughs> it should. Luke chapter 1 and verse 75. Hallelujah. So the Creator can more accurately once a man allows his heart to be enlarged, yep. then his ability to comprehend that the Creator right. more accurately tells him what's good for yes. him. Yes. Because he made him. Luke chapter right. 1 and verse 75. Oh, right? yeah. Luke chapter 1 and verse 75. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Yes. So this is, is the the man that's, that's running... Uh, the, the way of the Creator's commandments. Yes. He's doing it in Kadash and yes. Sadaqah. Yes. Before the Creator. Yeah, right. All Hayam of, of His kind. Yeah. All the days of our life. That's it. Go to Psalms 119. Again. Praise Him. In holiness and righteousness. That's the only way. And, and that is keeping the Creator's commandments. That's it. Running the way of the Creator's yes. commandments. Yes, no matter what. Psalms 119. And we're going to read verses 43 to 45. Praise on. Psalms chapter. Praise on. Revelation knowledge. Verses 43 to 45. And then it reads Psalms 119 and verse 43. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have hoped in thy judgments. Verse 44. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. Yes. Verse 45. And I will walk at liberty for I seek yes. thy precepts. So this is, this is the mindset of the, the person that is, is running the way of the Creator's commandments. He says, 
Take not Hadabar of Emmet utterly out of my mouth. Okay. So he's not only got it in, in his heart, it's not only a part of him, he's not only running the way of the commandments, it's also coming out of his mouth. That's it. It says, For I have hoped in thy Mishpah, so shall I shemar thy Torah continually forever and ever. Yeah, yeah. So he wants to know what the Torah is, I and know, he right? said, I'm going to keep it forever and yes. ever. Yes. Doesn't matter who, when he looks to the right or to the left. I know. Right. He's looking at the Creator and what the Creator said. Yep. And he's saying, this is what I'm going to do. I know, right? Like Yahushua said, as for me and my house. Because uh -huh. he stood up as a man of Yahweh and said, "What if, if you think it's evil to serve Yahweh, no, no, right. that's your choice. But as for me and my house, right, right, right. and whoever don't want to do it as a part of my house, there's the door. Right. What they say, let the door knob hit you. Yeah, yeah. All right. He said, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. So we understand from that, that, um, the verse in Psalms that is deliverance when you run in the way of the Creator's commandments. He said, I'm going to walk at liberty because I'm seeking your precepts. That's right, how right. I got my freedom. That's right. how I'm going to keep my freedom. Yep. Go to Proverbs, the ninth chapter. Proverbs in 9 chapter. So man lives long and strong by running the way of the Creator's yes. commandments after his heart is enlarged. Right, right. Lives long and strong by running the That's way right. of the Creator's commandments. Yep, yep. Proverbs in 9 chapter. And we want to read verse 11. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 9 <coughs> and verse 11 reads Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 11 For by me thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. Yes. Alright, so here's a creator a saying right, right. For by me uh -huh. thy yam shall be multiplied they're not going to be multiplied any other way but I by know, me. Right. And the years of thy kai shall uh, be uh, increased. Totally, Daddy. This is a done deal. Yeah, you know I mean? totally, Daddy. This is a sure thing. Yes. So go to Revelation the 16th chapter. But the Creator has no concept for retirement. Uh uh, no. Where is it written? No. He believes in rest now. And, and he believes in doing it the light and easy way. Yup, yup. But he has no concept of retirement. No, he doesn't. Revelation, the 16th chapter. So if he has no concept of retirement, but there is something called retirement out here, uh, huh. I'll give you two guesses, or uh, one guess to guess where it came from. Huh. Man? Yeah. Following who? The, the devil. devil. Revelation huh. 16. So the devil led man to conceive retirement. Yep. Chapter 16. And it was no accident. He did it for people to be to accept the okie doke huh. that when a person hits a certain age, they should be looked at as not being able to contribute uh. anything. And Yahweh, when a person hits a certain age, looks at him as that's the time to start them on their journey. Yeah, that's when they are the most equipped. That's when they are in the best shape. Hallelujah. That's when they have the, the best opportunity to do exactly what he wants yeah, right, to do. Right, right. So Just it's like no the man accident. Told you to. No, it's not. The devil led man to conceive know, retirement. Right. Revelation 16, <laughs> and we want to read verse 14. Praise him. And this talks about what the, what the devil uh, is doing. Uh -huh. is doing, even though he has been defeated. Right. He, he uh, is still running around acting like he has a chance. I know, right? But And for those of us that are, are not running the way of, of the commandments, then he may have a chance in their life. You're right. But for those that have received their deliverance and that are running the way of the Creator's commandments, oh, yeah. he has no chance. None. And prayerfully, these other people yes. will join us. Yes, yes. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 14 reads... Revelations chapter 16 and verse 14. 
So they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of El Shaddai. Uh -huh. Elohim El Shaddai. It says, for they are the spirits of devils. So whoever's behind whatever concept that the creator is not behind, right, right. that disagrees with what the creator said, is dealing with the spirits of devils. Yep, yep. Working miracles would go forth unto Hamelech of Ha'erit and of the whole world uh -huh. to gather them to battle to that great Yom of Elohim El Shaddai and to be on the wrong side of the battle. Right. Coming to battle against what uh -huh. the Creator said. So that that's what this is this is leading up to. Right, right. You you decide what side you you're gonna be on. That's it. And and. The Creator is telling you what the right side is. Right. Go to Genesis the eleventh chapter. So, the idea of retirement is man-made and is from the Babylonian language of rebellion. Right. Genesis the eleventh chapter. So the first man's lineage is the divine lineage, and it evolved into the Shemitic people. On the Genesis the eleventh chapter, oh, yeah. and the Shemites or Shemitic people inhabited nations of what's now called the Middle East. Genesis mm -hmm. chapter eleven. Just like it is, bro. Just like your daddy told you to. But this this idea of retirement is made from the Babylonian language of rebellion. Genesis eleven and verse one. That's oh, yeah. Genesis chapter eleven and verse one. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. So this, it says the whole earth was of one Akkad language and of one Akkad speech. Yep. So there was only one language. Right, right. So this Shemitic language was the one language of the whole earth. Right, right, right. That, that's right, right. what this language is talking about in this verse. So we can know. It is now referred to as original Hebrew, pure ancient Hebrew, or paleo Hebrew. So let's read about this um, language where it talks about the ancient Shemitic people's Hebrew language, please. The ancient Shemitic people's or Hebrew's language hold a genetic classification as one of the Earth's major languages. They spoke an Afro-Asiatic language, subdivisions of the Berber, Chaldic, Egyptian, Shemitic, Kushite, Kushetic, Beha, classified as part of Kush, Kushitic, and Amo, Amatic. This language was geographically distributed in the North Horn, in the Horn of Africa, North Africa, Northern Central Africa, Northern West Africa, and Southwest Asia. It is the Afrasian and Hamito Shemitic language which makes up about 375 languages with more than 300 million speakers in North Africa, East Africa, the Sahel, the South and Southwest Asia, including 200 million speakers of Arabic. So basically it's just saying, it's talking about the, uh, the cradle of civilization, right, right. which is over there in what's called Africa, the land of Ham. And it's just saying, this is what black folks spoke at first. So uh, Genesis, the 11th chapter, that was one language, and that was Paleo-Hebrew. Genesis, the 11th chapter, let's skip down to verse 6 to 8. Genesis Hallelujah. chapter 11. Hallelujah. And skip down. Let's read verses 6 to Hallelujah. 8, please. Amen. Genesis chapter 11 and verse 6. And Yahweh said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Verse 7. Go to, let us go down. And there, confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Now, this is what uh, the Creator did. Uh -huh. And we had read over in uh, Genesis um, 
the, the 19th chapter where uh, Abraham saw uh, three men coming. Right, right. And he immediately bowed himself to the ground. So now here's a, another instance where before uh, he came and, and met Abraham, he came down to see this, this tower that the men were building. Right, right. Because it was one language they could understand each other. And it says, and the master or the creator or the creator, Amar, behold, I am is Akada one, and they all have Akada one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing shall be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. It says, go to, let's go down, and there confound their language. Right, let's right. mix it up. Right. Make it Babel. We'll make it Babylon. Yeah. Confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So that's the that was the language of rebellion where yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the master came down and broke it up. The yeah, creator yeah. came down yeah. and broke it up. So they had to stop building because they couldn't understand what they were saying to right. each other. Alright, so so the language is divided up then and there. Alright, uh, but now Yahweh's obedient Shemitic people were not there. Right. And it took some centuries for their language, we'll see, to, to eventually be lost. But this was the big one to where the majority of the people in the world stopped speaking that one language. Tell so like it is, Rob, so you know. Verse 8. Verse 8. So Yahweh scattered them from scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the City. They had to stop because they mm -hmm. didn't understand each other. Right. So then they just they just scattered and, and uh, whatever few spoke the same language, right. they went together and, and scattered. Go to First Corinthians the ninth chapter. So as far as retiring, man can always decide to retire right. or stop work. He can always decide to do that. Right, right. First Corinthians the ninth chapter. Corinthians. Uh, uh, yeah. Chapter 9. And verse 6. Really? First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. For I only am Barnabas. Have, have not we power to forbear working? He said, uh, mm -hmm. or I only am Barnabas. So here's some two men of Yahweh said, have we not much shall to not work? Hey, we can, we can decide to retire. We can decide to stop work. And we live in a society where people just have uh, decided to retire or, or not work. It's a man can always, always decide to never even start work. <laughs> so find somebody you can lay up on or she can lay up on. And yeah. they'll be 50 years old. And uh, not working. Kind of like it is, Ross. Right? So 25 years old and not working. Kind of so like, man yeah, can always like decide to retire or stop work. So you're the man saying, hey, yeah, we, we can we can make that choice. Yeah. And they can decide to never even start work. Go to Proverbs, the 19th chapter. So it's not like they don't have free will to do whatever they want to do. Kind of like your daddy told you to, Ross. Right? Hey. But that doesn't mean it's in line with what the Creator I know, right? I said Yahweh. We can, we can decide to do whatever we want to do. That doesn't make it in line with what the Creator right, right. said to do. Um, let's see. Proverbs chapter 19. We want to read verse 15. Hallelujah. Yeah. So man can uh, decide to never start work. Right. Proverbs 19 <laughs> and verse 15. And it reads. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 15. 15. Slothfulness cast it into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer huh. hunger. Now, if, if everybody huh. had that enlarged heart, right. and they were running the way of the Creator's commandments, whoever decides not to work, or decides to, to stop work, that slothfulness will cast them into a deep sleep. Right. Sleeping all day, getting up at you know twelve o'clock, one o'clock, huh. and then staying up half the night. Right. 
and then doing the same thing again. All right. Cast him to a deep sleep, and an idle nephesh, an idle soul, shall suffer hunger. Yep, yep. But for those that got that 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 tiny heart, but for those that don't have the, the enlarged heart, to where they're they're running the way of of the the Creator's commandments. Oh, yeah. He said that idle soul would suffer hunger. I know, right? They would be hungry. <clears throat> so man's idea to retire or make it a full-time occupation to pursue relaxation huh. is doomed to fail. Oh yeah. Just like the idea to build a tower of Babel. So let's read about, okay, we saw where the Creator came down and, and confounded the language. But there were some obedient Shemites, like right. we are today, that were not part of building that tower of Babel. Yeah, right. So they were still speaking that one language. Yeah, yeah. But then, as time wore on, something happened to where it stopped being spoken. All right, so let's read about what, um, what happened. Ancient Hebrew became misunderstood and incompatible with the words of modern languages. Though the Shemitic people, letter, contracts, commerce, science, philosophy, medicine, poetry, and laws written in ancient Hebrew, are borrowed and used as models. After 200 AD, a pure ancient Hebrew gradually ceased to be a spoken language, though it still remains the one upon which writing, studying, and the content of literature value for its quality and form of language is based. All right, so Praise what you said right. about 200 AD, but still, the, when they're going to court and doing all this other stuff and making contracts and right. and, and writing books and different things, right. just saying writing, study, and the content right. of literature valued for its quality yes. is Praise still God basing right. it on that Praise one God original right. language. But after 200 AD, that pure ancient Hebrew, it gradually ceased to be spoken as a language. So when you got these dogmatic dogmatic people resurrecting, saying, this is the name, uh, that's, the name right. that's the name, uh, <laughs> do your research. Right. Go to 1 Timothy, the fifth chapter. Praise the mighty God. It was lost. Right. Now, the Creator does say He will restore the pure language. Yeah, yeah. But at this point in time, it's lost. But, but do what you know. Right, right. If you don't want to say JST, if you don't want to say GOD, then come up with, do the research as far as you can go. But uh, we will politely uh, tell you, look, take that somewhere else if you want to uh, be dogmatic and try right. to Hallelujah. stick on this or stick on that. Right. Let's move on. There, there's, there's work to do. I know. Y'all right, Ron. Tell like Let's it agree is. on what we can't agree on. That's let's, right. let's get it done. Tell it, just say it just like your daddy told you to. So promoting retirement passes on to impressionable children that work is hard. Hmm. And that may be why some of them have decided never to work. Hmm. Have people come home and talk about, oh boy, that was so hard though. Yeah. Rather than stressing how they're blessed that they have food, yes. clothing, and Probably shelter, yeah. and that's how they, they get it right. by doing Praise it. Praise the mighty God. So, so we need to have this consciousness of not putting the focus on the, the wrong way. Right, right. Like, like Babylon does. First Timothy, the fifth chapter, in 20, verse 13. First Praise Timothy, God. chapter 5. Praise God. And verse 13. Praise God. Read. First Timothy, chapter 5, and verse 13. And with all, they learn to be idle, uh -huh. wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Uh -huh. Just trying to find something to, to occupy their minds, know, something right? to, to, yes. to have them, <laughs> them be busy about something. Right. <laughs> because we're going to find out that the Creator put that in man. To be busy, to be about something. Right, right. It says, and with all, they learn to be idle. Well, 
Mm. This, this lesson is telling us they did not get it from the Creator. Right, right. They, they learned, learned, learned to be slothful. They learned yep. to choose not to work. They learned to retire. To, to retire. Yep. Wandering about from house to house, not only idle, just trying to find something to do because whoever dealt with them had that small heart instead of that enlarged heart was right. not running after the, the Creator's command. So, like it is, right? so, so they taught them some stuff yep. by default from the natural world, which was the opposite of what the Creator actually said. Yep. And so, man got this thing, he understands he's supposed to be busy, he's supposed to be doing something. Yep, yep. But without that direction, without the, the Creator letting him know, or them seeing somebody running after right, the right, way right. of the, the Creator's commands, oh, yeah. then they're clueless. They're just going to do something to fill up their time right. to, to be busy. Go to Ecclesiastes in the second chapter. But what they find to fill up their time is is not something that they should be doing. Right, right. It's unprofitable. Tell like it is, right? Tell so like there's it no pur purpose whatsoever than to fill time. I know, right? So please ask the second chapter. Man thinks retirement is a worthy goal to be obtained. <laughs> but is it? Please ask the second chapter. And the only one that can tell you that is the creator. Right, right. Because he made man. Yes. Ecclesiastes, the second chapter. We're going to read verses 1 to 11. Pray. Ecclesiastes, Mighty chapter yeah. 2. Man thinks retirement is a worthy goal to go after, but is it? Ecclesiastes 2, and let us read verses 1 to 11, please. Okay. Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, and verse 1. I said in my heart, go to now. I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure, and behold, this is uh, vanity. Verse 2, I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? Verse 3, I sought in my heart to give myself up unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. Uh -huh. All right, bless the man. Uh -huh. Yeah, so now here is uh, <laughs> King Shlomo, um, the richest man in, in, in the world and uh, the wisest man in the world that uh, had a father and a mother. And he's saying, you know what? Let me just go and do, <laughs> let me just pursue all my pleasure. Let me just pursue ultimate relaxation. Let me just do whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it. And uh, he said, um, I said to, to my, my, my leg, my heart, my mind, hey, go to now. I'm, I'm going to prove you with yeah. laughter, with mirth. Hey, I'm going to right. enjoy all your pleasure. Do whatever you want to do. He said, Behold, this also is vanity. Right. He said that this is empty. I uh, know. He no. said, uh, I am more of laughter. It is mad and a mirth. What doeth it? Uh. He said, I sought in my leg to give myself unto Yahim. Uh, no, I right. said, Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to drink. And just drink as much and drink yeah. whatever kind of wine or whatever kind of liquor there is in the world. Yeah. Yet acquainting my leg with Kokma and to lay hold on folly. Uh. Till I might see what was that tobe or good for Haban of Adam, the sons of men, which they should do under Hashemite or the son, all Hayyam of their no, no. all the days of their life. No, no, right. You see people now just drink from sun yep. up to sundown <laughs> and, and just just going for it. It's like, okay. So King Shlomo said, okay, well, let me try this. So he's just going from one thing to another. Mm -hmm. Just like there are people in the world now, yep. caught up in that, just going from one thing for, to yep. another, yep. trying to find some kind of satisfaction, right. some kind of relaxation. That's what the goal is, I to, know, right? to get relaxation. So the goal they, is to vacation. The goal, that's, that's what you're supposed to be doing. All right, verse 4. Verse 4. I made me great works. I built me houses. I planted me vineyards, 
Verse 5, I made me gardens and orchids, and I planted trees in them, in huh. them of all kinds of fruits. Verse 6, I made me pools of water <laughs> to water with therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. All right, praise uh -huh. Yahweh for his word. So he said, okay, well, I tried it. Okay, let me right. try it. Okay, I, I made me great works. I, I built houses. Right. Well, you got some people that got houses. They got the vacation house, and then uh -huh. they got the other house, and then they got this house here, and they got this and that. He said, I planted vineyards. Uh -huh. I made me gardens. And orchard, I planted trees, and then he said all kind of fruits. Uh -huh. He says I made pools of water. Uh -huh. All right, so I got to swimming pools, and I did this, I did that, to water there with the wood that that bringing forth trees. So he said I'm I'm just kind of looking and seeing. Okay, people say this is supposed to be so satisfying. Right, this, right. They, they they tell me see way back then right. this is what life is about. Right. Just find this, just do that, just go. All right, you just go to a good resort, yeah. yeah. So you really, oh, you right. have anywhere till you go to that resort. Right. Verse seven. Verse seven. I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle of both all that were in Jerusalem before me. Verse eight. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I got me men, singers, and women singers, and the delights of the sons of men, as musical instruments, and that of all sorts. Praise Yahweh's word. He said, so, okay, well, I got me some, some servants. Right. And maybe somebody said, okay, the servants you got, well, no, if you get these people, they really know how to serve. Uh -huh. I got me some servants, I got me some maidens, uh -huh. and I had servants born in my house. I thought, okay, I had great possessions, and of great and great cattle uh -huh. above all that were in Jerusalem before me. This was the richest man that ever lived. Right. He said, I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and other provinces, uh -huh. like whatever it was, jewels or right. whatever it was. Right. I got me, he said, okay, I got me a choir, I got some singers <laughs> to sing for me. And it says, men singers and women singers and the delights of Haban of Adam as musical instruments and that of all sorts. Uh -huh. He said, I tried all kind of different singers and because some sang better than others and some recommend, okay, from this nation, uh -huh. they sing better than, he said, I tried that too. All right, verse 9. Verse 9. Verse. So I was great and Increase more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. Uh -huh. Verse 10. And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion of all my labor. Verse 11. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity uh -huh. and vexation of spirit. Uh -huh. and there was no profit under the sun. Right. All right, so King Tlum said, I, so I was great. Uh -huh. And I increased more than all that were before me in Yerushalayim. He said, also, my kokmah remained with me. So Please, the creator gave him his uh -huh. right. right. So he's gathering all this stuff. He's doing all this stuff. But... The Creator's wisdom is letting him know, that, you know what, this is a waste of time. This, this makes no sense. This, I got all this stuff, but it's not, it's not doing what people around me are telling me it's supposed to do right, for right. He said, and whatsoever mine eyes desire, I shamar not from them. I got it for myself. Right, right. That's what people running around doing today. Right. That's what they've been told. I withheld not. My lay from any sim cop, my I didn't I went, didn't withhold anything from myself. He said, for my labor, rejoice, smack in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Said, all right, after I did all this uh -huh. stuff, then I looked on all the works that my hands had gotten, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, it was all empty, vanity, and vexation of ruach. He said, somebody gave him a bag with paper in it. Uh -huh. They sold him right. a lie and he found out that's a lie. Uh -huh. 
Right. He said that there was no prophet under the sun. Right. It is not if you're not going to be our creator. Right. There is no satisfaction. None. Go to Ecclesiastes, the uh, eighth chapter. So man flying from coast to coast, seeing how much relaxation he can get. I know, right? Will backfire on him. We see Shalomo said it backfired on him. Ecclesiastes, the eighth chapter. We're going to read verse 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And verse 15. Read. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 15. Then I commanded mirth because a man had no better thing under the sun than to eat and to uh -huh. drink and to be merry. For that shall abide with him of his labor, the, of, of his labor the days of his life, which Elohim giveth him under the sun. Huh. All right, so then uh, he, he said in, in the, the <laughs> chapter before, okay, he did all this stuff, right. and he said, right. okay, well, okay, let me, I commend mirth, let me lift it up a little higher, uh -huh. laughter, he says, because Adam had no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and be merry. And then the world and they had to eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we may die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they added that to that. In other words, get all the relaxation, right. get all right. the, do all the things you're going to do. Right. But he says, for that shall abide with him of his labor, how yam of his kai, which Elohim giveth him under the sun. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 9, and, and we're going to read 9. So man spending more time doing what he wants uh -huh. sounds good to him. Right. However, right. it runs contrary to the way of the Creator's yep. commandments. Ecclesiastes 9 and 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 9. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the, of the life of thy vanity, which <laughs> he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. So King Slomo said, yeah, enjoy yourself now, but just realize this, this stuff is just passing away. He said, enjoy yourself, but put it in perspective. Right. Yeah, live smack with ha Isha, whom you have all hayam of the hakai of your vanity. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, it is vanity if, if you're not uh, running the way of the Creator. Right. His commandments, which He have given thee under the sun, all high yam of your vanity. For that is the, thy portion in this kind, uh -huh. in the labor which thou takest under the sun. So man spending more time doing what he wants sounds good, but it runs contrary to the way of the Creator's commandments, and it opens the door to a curse. So let's read about what happens to your body when you retire. See, the, 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 the Babylonian folks are not telling you that. They're just saying, hey, retire, retire. And just count how many years before you, you retire, before you stop working. Right. All right, let's read it. What happens to your body when you retire? The OSU researchers found that healthy adults who retire one year past age 65 had an 11% lower risk of death from all causes, even when taking into account demographic, lifestyle, and health issues. Even people who describe themselves as unhealthy were found likely to live longer if they kept working, the study said. All right, so it said even people who describe themselves as unhealthy were likely to live longer if they kept working. So man following ideas in opposition to the creators never work in his best interest. His retirement idea is deadly. Let's look at the, let's read this early retirement may be the kiss of death. Early retirement may be the kiss of death. Study finds by HuffPost.com dated April 28, 2016. Study after study has shown that people who retire early tend to die sooner, including this latest study from, the, from Oregon State University. During, during the study period, about 12% of the healthy and 
25.6% of the unhealthy retirees die. According to the study, healthy retirees who work a year longer had an 11% lower risk of mortality, while unhealthy retirees who worked a year longer had a 9% lower mortality risk. Working a year longer had a positive impact on the study participants' mortality rate regardless of their health status. The findings seem to indicate that people who remain active and engaged draw benefit from that, the study concluded. All right, so the findings indicate that people who remain active yeah, yeah. and engaged All right. draw a benefit from that. So assuming that free time, more free time is good hurts man. Too much free time leads him to heavy alcohol use, physical inactivity, yeah. obesity, stress, short and long term health issues. And religious man has taken retirement to an even higher level of disagreement with the Creator. There's this song, Walk Around Heaven All Day. Mm -hmm. And let's, let's read the, the words to this song, and then this will probably be the, the end of uh, this. Hey, the Maria. Walk Around Heaven All Day by the Caravans. One of these mornings, it won't be long, you'll look for me and I'll be gone. I'm going to a place where I'll have nothing to do but just, just, but just walking around heaven all day. <clears throat> when I get to heaven, I'll sing and shout. Nobody will be able to put me out. My mother will be waiting and other loved ones too. And we'll join hands and walk around heaven all day. Every day will be Sunday, Sabbath will have no end. We'll do nothing but sing, God knows we'll pray. And when he says, well done, your race has been has be won, that's when I'll walk around heaven all day. Lord up above, please hear me pray, walk right by my side. All right, so you see, they talking about walking around uh, heaven all, right. all day. Go to James, the fifth chapter. Let's see, I have a few more minutes. James, the fifth chapter. Praise Maria. Revelation. Yeah, that religious man has taken retirement to <laughs> taking it to the kingdom. I know, right? Going to a place where I have nothing to do but just <laughs> walk around heaven all day. James, fifth chapter. Verses nineteen to twenty. James Hallelujah. chapter five. No. Yeah. James chapter 5 and verse 19. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, verse 20, let him know that he which covered cover, cover the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Oh, yeah. This is a, a, a wide-reaching statement. It's saying, ah, if any of you do err from my image, uh -huh. from the Creator's commandment, right, right. the way of the Creator, and a kind of one convert him, uh -huh. let him, Yadar, know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way. So look at that retirement as a goal to where you go walk around and do nothing or right. you go sleep all day and sleep uh -huh. all night. He says, you shall save a soul from death right. and shall hide a multitude of hata'a. So a man has a small heart without the Creator. Right. It tells him that at a certain age he earns the right to sit down and do nothing. <laughs> right. He made up not working. Mm. Then refers to himself as quote unquote retired. Uh -huh. So now the English word retired, what does that actually mean? It, according to the noble word. No, wait, no, don't you have the English word retired? Oh, here it is. Okay, let me start this over. Okay. okay. 
Mm -hmm. The English word retiring means to give up a job permanently and quit working, to go away, especially to be alone, to go to bed, to withdraw from use or service, to get away from action or danger, and retreat. So that's, that's what this word <laughs> retiring means. You go sit down, you do nothing. Give up a job permanently and quit working. To go away, especially to be alone, to go to bed, to withdraw from use or service, to get away from action or danger and retreat. <clears throat> so let's see how this word came about. Now you can read about noble word. Yes. According to nobleword.co.uk, Wikipedia.com and SSA.gov, so that's Social Security Administrative.gov. Retirement is one of the words which the English language appropriated from the French around the 16th century. It was originally used in the military sense, meaning, for example, to withdraw to a place of safety or seclusion from the French RE back. Read that and tire to draw. In 1881, the German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, Bismarck announced that anyone over 70 years old would be forced to retire and that he would pay a pension to them. Germany became the first nation in the world to adopt an old age social insurance program in 1889. All right, so yeah. now we're, we're looking at this Western European thing yeah, yeah. that man made up. And then in Germany, he said if they were forced them to retire uh -huh. at 70. So let's go to Luke, the third chapter. So those of you that know me know that I um, had said, uh, started saying years ago that I was re-fired. Right, right. And I know there were some that looked at me like, oh, you know, Shalom, she's special. She was just saying this, this uh, old crazy stuff. It don't make no sense. No, I knew exactly what I was right, saying. Right, praise the Maria. Because I understand the definition of retirement. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell myself uh, no, no ignorant stuff like that. Right, right. Luke, third chapter. So, yes, I am refired. Luke yes. the third chapter, and let's read verses 16 to 18. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3 and verse 16. 